In this video about introduction to young adult literature, we will talk about its definition, the qualities, and a brief history of the young adult literature. Defining young adult literature Articulating a brief yet comprehensive definition of young adult literature is indeed a challenging task because this definition has changed and evolved over the years. In fact, there really is no consensus among publishers, librarians, teachers, reviewers, and booksellers about exactly what young adult literature is. There is not even agreement about who is a young adult. Thus, for the purpose of this discussion, various definitions will be highlighted. Scholars in the 1950s and 1960s define young adult literature as anything read by those between the ages of 13 and 18, approximately. This definition was very broad and included not only young adult books but also significantly books written for children and adults but read by teens. When Joanne F. K. Well surveyed members of the Conference on English Education Commission on the study and teaching of young adult literature, she found several definitions of young adults, including ages between 11 and 16, between 10 and 21, between 12 and 22, and grades 6 to 12. Professional associations and award committees do not agree on an age span. A two-year overlap exists between the ages noted for Children's Literature's Newbery Award up to age 14 and Young Adult Literature's Michael L. Prince Awards ages 12 to 18. Members of the National Council of Teachers of English Conference on English Education Commission on the Study and Teaching of Young Adult Literature could not reach a consensus on the age range. Most committee members did put the range somewhere between ages 11 and 18 with a grade range between 6th and 12th grades. The Young Adult Library Services Association, part of the American Library Association, gives several awards for young adult literature, including the Michael L. Prince Award and the Margaret A. Edwards Award. The Prince Award is given to the best young adult book, fiction, nonfiction, poetry or anthology published in the previous year, while the Edwards Award is given to an author whose book or books have provided young adults with a window through which they can view their world and which will help them to grow and to understand themselves and their role in society. Although both awards are given for young adult literature, the criteria defining young adult literature are very different for each award. This and other award-giving bodies will further be discussed on the succeeding topics. Rachel L. Wadham and Jonathan W. Austinson, in their book Integrating Young Adult Literature Through the Common Core Standards, contend that at the very core, young adult literature is a work that represents an entirely adolescent point of view that is mainly marketed to that same audience. Although some children's and adults' books appeal to young adults, literature written primarily for young adults should reflect several criteria. It should reflect young adults' age and development by addressing their reading abilities, thinking levels, and interest levels. It should deal with contemporary issues, problems, and experiences with characters to whom adolescents can relate. This includes topics such as dealing with parents and other adults in authority, facing illness and death, dealing with peer pressure, 
specifically relating to drugs, alcohol, and sexual experimentation, and facing the realities of addiction and pregnancy. It should consider contemporary world perspectives, including cultural, social, and gender diversity, environmental issues, global politics, and international interdependence. According to Stallworth 2006, there is no doubt among scholars that today's young adult literature is sophisticated, complex, and powerful, and that it deserves to be part of the literary tradition in middle and high schools. In addition to helping students develop reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills, it can offer a connection to alienated students, mirror the lives of young adults, improve literacy skills, and provide a forum for adolescents to discuss what it means to come of age, including navigating difficult problems, accessing tools needed to become problem solvers, and fostering empathy. Young adult literature serves a number of purposes. It teaches adolescents about diverse peoples and the world beyond their community. It provides pleasure reading. It demonstrates the range of human emotions and allows adolescents to experience them as a result of reading quality literature. It reveals the realities of life. It provides vicarious experiences. It focuses on essentials that make order out of chaos. It depicts the functions of institutions of society. It allows readers to escape into the realms of fantasy. It introduces readers to excellent writers in writing. And it increases literacy and the ability to analyze literature. Scholars agree that the history of children's books began at early 1600s. However, books specifically for adolescents have had a much shorter history. This may be due in part to the fact that the adolescent years were not even considered a distinct part of one's lifespan until 1904 when G. Stanley Hall published his work, Adolescents. Even with this recognition, it was not until well into the 1940s that the world's economic and social conditions significantly changed to make it fully possible to have a period past childhood. Once the first group of post-war babies had reached their teenage years in the 1960s, society not only accepted the idea of adolescence, but began to see this age group as one with distinct characteristics and needs. So it was, then, in the 60s and 70s, when new ideas about personal conduct and societal rules for teens became paramount, that we see the emergence of young adult literature as a separate genre. Most critics agree that it was in 1967 with the publication of S. E. Hinton's The Outsider and in 1968 with Paul Zindel's The Pigman that young adult literature was born. Hinton's and Zindel's groundbreaking works were the first to show the world through the eyes of a teenager. Following in their footsteps were Robert Lipsight, M. E. Kerr, Robert Newton Peck, and perhaps most famously, Robert Cormier's The Chocolate War, 1974, and Judy Blum's Are You the God? It's Me, Margaret, 1970. These early works were most often works of gritty realism, dealing with tough issues faced by complex characters that appeal to the teens facing the harsh realities of a time punctuated by rock and roll, war, and riots. As the 70s came to a close, we saw changes in young adult literature, with media playing a much stronger role in the lives of teens, reading habits changed. 
The Babysitter Club, Sweet Valley High, and Fear Street were favorites of many teens in this era. Groundbreaking books such as Cynthia Voigt's Dicey Song, 1983, Walter Dean Meyer's Fallen Angels, 1988, and Francesca Leah Block's Wheat Z Bat, 1989, also came on the scene during this period. The 1990s saw another significant shift in the history of young adult literature. In a surge that many critics attribute to the Harry Potter phenomena, first published in the United States in 1998, reading became cool again. Publishers also began to see strong market in teenagers who had lots of disposable income and then began to create more books for this audience. By the turn of the century, young adult literature had become the fastest growing market in the industry, with marketing intelligence companies such as Simba reporting approximately 2,000 new titles published each year. This impressive growth spans the gamut from realism to fantasy and is constantly embracing new formats from graphic novels to short stories. And with the establishment of different awards on young adult literature, R. Wadham and J. Austinson says that young adult literature has finally established a solid footing and is dynamically evolving over the century. And that ends this video on the introduction to young adult literature. Please do not forget to like and subscribe on this channel.